أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلوات وأتم التسليم على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا السلام على فاطمة وأبيها وبعلها وبنيها والسر المستودع فيها عظم الله أجورنا وأجوركم ما الله سبحانه وتعالى accept our عزاء for the last two months of mourning Muharram and Safar and of course continuing on with commemorating the tragic events that befell upon Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam We've just passed the sad martyrdom of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alih which coincided with the end of the sacred month of Safar and as Muslims we try as much as we can to somehow show and express our affiliation, our commitment, our loyalty to uh, the Holy Prophet. The best way that we can do this is in what it is that he himself had requested us to do. A group of people went expressing their uh, commitment to him, their gratitude to him by giving him some of their money and wealth and things like that. And a beautiful verse descended uh, unto the Holy Prophet uh, where through what it is that the Prophet himself had said in the ayah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, قُلْ لَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا إِلَّا الْمَوَدَّةَ فِي الْقُرْبَى That I am not asking for you, from you, any kind of uh, reward other than your loyalty, your affectionate love to Al-Qurba, to uh, my kin, to the family members of the Holy Prophet. Now this ayah itself, without doubt, no two Muslims would disagree on. All Muslims somehow do have that love or respect to uh, not only the Holy Prophet, but also his progeny, his offspring. The thing here is, what does love mean and how could love be different from affectionate love or mawadda? We know what mahabba means, which means love, but mawadda is a different level of love. It means expressing it in the material, physical world, how you are able to show that kind of love and respect in person. And what we can see, what we can say clearly is that the followers of Ahlul Bayt السلام, the Shia of Amir al muminin are the only people who have really shown time after time that mawadda to Qurba and the kin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. How can that be seen? Clearly, we understand that it was not only a matter of showing that level of loyalty and commitment to the Holy Prophet while he was alive, but also after his um, departure from uh, this world. Uh, what I will be focusing on, inshallah, in uh, this brief uh, presentation is the event surrounding uh, the uh, unfortunate miscarriage of Sayyida Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam, the beloved daughter of our Holy Prophet. She was pregnant and due to uh, certain events that unfolded after the uh, departure of the Holy Prophet, after the passing away, after the martyrdom of the Holy Prophet, she lost the unborn child because of these particular events. And what we do know is the name that was given to this unborn child is of course Muhsin, a shaheed Muhsin alayhi salam. That name given to him by his grandfather 
the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. So I'm going to tackle this um, incident um, from different angles, hopefully being able to cover as much as I can uh, in order to show not only the significance of this particular event, but also how it has an effect on us as the followers of Ahlul Bayt, what kind of impact it should have. And that's why this particular time, uh, passing the Shahada of the Holy Prophet with the ending of Safar, entering into uh, the month of uh, Rabi'ul Awwal, we um, are kind of like close to that particular time where all of this happened. I'm going to speak about that in detail. What we do know is that Sayyidah Fatima to Zahra in the year 11 after Hijrah, which is when the Holy Prophet departed this world, she was pregnant. And of course, with uh, Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam preparing everything that was needed for the burial ceremony of the Holy Prophet, other people were occupied in conspiring as to what should be done now that the Prophet has left us, what are we going to do with leadership? Of course here, um, to add as a footnote, we can see that this itself is a clear sign that those people and people today that carry that kind of mentality still don't really recognize the Holy Prophet in his full potential status, in him being the messenger of God, where he's going to be leaving out that chunk, that large portion of such an important uh, case of leaving the Muslim Ummah uh, in a chaotic way where it is for them to decide who is going to be the next leader. A pilot wouldn't do that. A, a ship a captain wouldn't do that. Nobody in their sane mind would leave a company or a ship or uh, anything of that sort. Even a family wouldn't do that, let alone the beloved Prophet of Islam. And that's why there are a lot of things that we are able to say that shows that you, the Muwali, you, the follower of Ahlul Bayt, really has taken the greatest position in honoring uh, Rasulullah in every way possible. And that's something that we really, really need to be uh, proud of. So she was pregnant. That is something um, that is unanimously uh, accepted. And of course, it was the year 11 after Hijrah. Here, usually the common arguments that are mentioned as far as a Shaheed Muhsin alayhi salam is concerned is, well, um, even though the Holy Prophet had named uh, him as Muhsin, which is of course mustahab in itself, it's recommended for a person to name their uh, child in a particular uh, name, male or female, but the Holy Prophet had named him and had named all of the other uh, Ma'asumin alayhim salam and also the non-Ma'asumin. He gave a Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam her name, Hassan his name, even with um, the likes of Ali ibn Abi Talib and others. It was the Holy Prophet that gave them the name. Uh, of course, through uh, Allah subhanahu uh, wa ta'ala. Now we do have uh, Sunni references that speak about a Shaheed Muhsin, but here they are divided into two groups. One group say that he was yet to be born. Um, another group says that he was born. Now among the famous um, authors and Sunni scholars who have um, established the existence of uh, a Shaheed Muhsin is Ahmed ibn Hanbal in his Musnad, Ibn Kathir in his Bidaya wal Nihaya, and Ibn Hajar al Asqalani in Fathil Bari. 
Some uh, of the Sunni ulama say he was not uh, yet born. Some uh, Sunni ulama say he was born but died at a young age. Then, of course, we have a minority of Sunni ulama who say that no, um, there was no such existence of any uh, person by the name of Muhsin, born or unborn. Unfortunately, we also have in the Shia world certain individuals, a very small minority, a very small minority, who say that no, this is, this has not been uh, authenticated as far as the existence um, of uh, someone by the name of Muhsin alayhi salam. And of course, the common, very common argument that is usually used by some of these uh, Shi'i ulama is that, you know, um, even Shaykh al-Mufid does not count al-Muhsin as among the 27 children of uh, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. Now let's say for argument's sake that in Kitab al-Arshad such a thing was said, which it wasn't because that can be argued as well. But let's say for argument's sake that that um, has been mentioned. But what about the other books of Sheikh al-Mufid? And by the way, Sheikh al-Mufid is very, very important as far as us gaining uh, primary uh, information about the hist history of our Ma'asumin uh, especially that book Kitab al-Irshad because Shaykh al-Mufid lived very close to the era of our 12th Imam so that itself carries a lot of uh, significance but as I said for argument's sake we can kind of like we if we if we are going to question what's been mentioned in um, Shaykh al-Mufid's uh, Kitab al-Irshad or the Book of Guidance which has been translated into English by the way I would recommend all of my brothers and sisters to read uh, this book pretty much half of it um, covers Imam Ali's life and the other half co covers the rest of the 11 Ma'asumin very important book for all of us uh, to read but it's not just in Kitab al-Irshad that Al-Muhsin has been mentioned. It's also been mentioned in Kitab Al-Ikhtisas by Al-Mufid Allah Ta'ala Alayhi and also by Al-Muqni'ah al -Muqni'a, which is kind of like a fiqh book, a risala amaliya of Shaykh Al-Mufid. In addition to that, the outstanding student of Shaykh Al-Mufid, Shaykh Al-Ta'ifa, Shaykh Al-Tusi, the author of Al-Tahdib al Wal-Istibsar, he mentions also in detail the, the um, uh, story of Al-Muhsin alayhi salam. He doesn't say, well, my teacher, for example, rejected the existence of Al-Muhsin uh, Al and whatnot. And so the overall n narrative that we're able to see is the existence, the presence of a, uh, an unborn child uh, by the name of Muhsin, the name Muhsin or Muhassin was given by the Holy Prophet and of course Sayyida Fatima to Zahra experienced what it is that she uh, went through as far as attacking of her house and due to those circumstances she had a miscarriage. Now this is of course uh, unanimously agreed upon and of course that itself is very important for us um, to establish because in the case that someone does throw out some kind of misinformed uh, uh, narration or um, blatant ignorance as far as uh, what it is that they have uh, brought together we need to, of course, be ready, be prepared for us to say and direct them to correct um, uh, information. Just a side note here as well, that's why we always need to refer back to our ulama, our mainstream ulama, our, ma our, ma our mainstream historians to always verify the information that we have. 
and not just to read something on face value we need to make sure that we have uh, an in-depth understanding when it comes to these things in addition to that let's say that such a piece of information exists in a uh, particular book and it's very explicit but it goes against the mainstream view that can also needs to be analyzed as well is there a problem with the manuscript how authentic is the attribution of this book to that particular uh, alim you know and even with, when it comes to manuscript research and things like that maybe the wording was different maybe it was from a later copy or edition of the manuscript maybe it wasn't researched in the right way and all these different scenarios that we are able um, to come up with there is of course a um, famous book by uh, someone by the name of al khasibi uh, in al hidaya al kubra and of course he is a nusayri but um, he had written extensively about our ma'sumin uh, and he explicitly mentions this is a very one of the early um, uh, references he ex explicitly mentions this whole event about uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab and of course his associate Qunfud and all those uh, issues as far as um, collecting uh, wood, uh, burning uh, parts of the house, uh, kicking the door down, uh, Sayyidah Zahra alayhi salam being squeezed between uh, the door and the wall, a particular uh, nail uh, piercing through her blessed shoulder, uh, her asking uh, her maid Fidda radiyallahu ta'ala anha to help her the miscarriage happening and all of these other issues that we all know about. I did say um, Muhsin or Muhassin because as far as the uh, overall way of how the name um, is to be mentioned, there is a difference of opinion with the scene. It does it have a shadda on it or not? Some people say Muhsin, some people say Muhassin. But in any case, what we are commonly used to as far as the name is concerned is uh, Shaheed Muhsin, is Muhsin alayhi salam. So, six months uh, in her, into her pregnancy, uh, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi died. Um, she was bereaving, she was very sad uh, due to the loss of uh, her father uh, all of these things were happening as far as uh, the conspiracy in preparing the uh, Saqifa of Bani Sa'ida and um, the plot to try to remove uh, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam from all of this the pressure um, that was being put on people to come and pledge uh, allegiance and do bay'ah to uh, Abu Bakr ibn Abi Qahafa and all of these things that were happening all of these all of these issues uh, were occurring very very quickly as well Imam Ali was had only one thing on his mind and that was the honorary burial of uh, the Holy Prophet. He also was trying to make sure that he doesn't aggravate the situation because he was given that particular command, that order from the Holy Prophet. And that's why when they came to, uh, in, to attack uh, Baytul Wahi, and we need to say Baytul Wahi as well because Babu Fatima is Babu Rasulullah. We know that all of the doors uh, to the Masjid al nabawi al-Sharif were closed except for the Bab, except for the door of Fatima. We know that the Holy Prophet would regularly for months on end go and uh, uh, summon them, wake them up or call them for Salah and he would say 
while knocking on the door innama yuridu Allah liyudhiba ankum ar-rijsa ahl al-bayt wa yutahhirakum tathira we know about that so we know that the house of Fatima was the house of wahi we know that the house of Fatima had a very high status in the eyes of the holy prophets so let's say that there was a 10% probability that only 10% it could have happened that somehow Umar ibn al-Khattab or Abu Bakr were involved in pressuring Fatima to Zahra or somehow insulting or abusing or anything of that sort of course they should be held accountable now I said 10% because let's remove all of these you know probably things that we might have to say but even if we have the least chance that they were somehow involved in all of these things they should still be held accountable and that's what I meant when I said that you, the follower of Ahlul Bayt, you, the Muwali, the loyal Shi'i of Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam, you are showing the highest level of commitment and loyalty to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, whereas the others are not, because they haven't made their stance clear. They haven't shown their position when it comes to that mawadda fil qurba. Now, we know, as I was saying, that it, um, she was uh, Fatima to Zahra was six months uh, pregnant. We also know that it happened, uh, the attacking of the house happened after the departure of Rasulullah, which, what particular day, we don't know. But we do know that it happened within at least, or at most, a month after the uh, Shahada of the Holy Prophet. It might not have happened immediately after the Shahada. And we do refer to this time as Al Ayyam Al Muhsiniya. Al Ayyam Al Muhsiniya, or the Muhsin days. These are the Muhsin days of mourning because that event with the miscarriage, with a Zahra being squeezed between the door and the wall, and the wounds that occurred um, because of that particular attack on her house led to her martyrdom. So her shahada was a result of what happened with the uh, attacking of her house. Historians do say that this event of the attacking of uh, Daru Zahra did not happen just once or twice, that there were numerous times that they came to put pressure on Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam to do bay'ah to um, the uh, first Khalifa uh, Abu Bakr. Now, um, with, of course, um, this we can see that the, uh, the assumption that it was just a one-off incident, they came, they uh, put wood, they burned the door down and that's it. No, historians do say that there was more than one time that this holy house, the sanctity of this holy house was desecrated by those uh, very uh, people. And this was of course during these particular days of uh, uh, early stages of al saqifa We know that Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam, uh, immediately after the uh, departure of the Holy Prophet, there were problems that were, were surfacing. You know, there was her demanding fedak, um, which itself is extremely important. Who took fedak away? She was demanding fedak. She was also demanding that um, the, the rightful uh, status of Khilafa and Wilaya uh, and Wisaya be given to um, Imam Ali because that was what the Holy Prophet had wanted. We also know of her famous khutbas that she had delivered uh, as well. And of course this couldn't have happened until 
um, uh, this couldn't have happened after, must have happened before because of uh, the strenuous pain and also um, the level of suffering that she went through after uh, the uh, particular uh, attack. Now, of course, what we do know is that Sayyid al-Zahra um, being, having uh, that particular situation, bereaving the loss um, of her uh, father, um, she had even spoken to al-Muhajireen uh, wal-Ansar uh, as well. And this is why, you know, um, in those earlier uh, books, like for example, in Amali al-Saduq, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi, he says, Amma ibnati Fatima fa'innaha sayyidatu nisa'il alameena min al-awwalina wal-akhirin. We know that, of course. And then here it says, wa kusirat jambatuha wa asqatat janinuha. And of course, her her side, yani her rib, her was was um, broken and she had uh, lost her unborn uh, child. She had a uh, miscarriage. فَأَقُولُ عِنْدَ ذَلِكَ أَلَّهُمَّ الْعَنْ مَنْ ظَلَمَهَا وَخَلِّدْ فِي نَارِكَ مَنْ ضَرَبَ جَنِينَهَا حَتَّى أَلْقَتْ وَلَدَهَا Now, why is it so important for us um, to mention all of these things? Because on a theological level, we understand that when it comes to something uh, as uh, significant as this, especially that pressure putting, uh, that, that's being put onto Imam Ali, other people didn't do bay'ah and they were the companions of the Holy Prophet. They didn't do bay'ah. But why was there such a focus on Imam Ali? Because of the status that he had, because of the influence that he had in the eyes of uh, people. And that's exactly why they did what they did in that heinous way, in that evil way, in that evil way. No respect whatsoever, male, female. And that's why they, the, the historians, they mention in the Fiddari Fatima that, there, um, uh, that Fatima is in the house. And this particular person said, what in? So what? It's a female. It is a female, a pregnant female, the daughter of the uh, Holy Prophet, the only living child of the Holy Prophet. Shouldn't you be honoring her in the highest level uh, possible? Let's say that all of the Shia are wrong and they are mis, uh, have been misled and misinformed and all of these things. Where is your position when it comes to Fatima to Zahra. Does it not say in Al Bukhari when Al Zahra went and met with Abu Bakr and Umar and uh, she refused to reply their salam and she refused to meet with them and she refused to allow them uh, to participate in her burial and her burial was a uh, secret and her grave until today is unknown and, and a secret as a form of demonstrating, as a form of protesting against the tyranny uh, that she uh, faced by them, by them, not by other people. This is why uh, the Holy Prophet had said, يَرْضَ اللَّهِ لِرِضَاهَا وَيَغْضَبْ لِغَضَبِهَا وَيَغْضَبْ لِغَضَبِهَا that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to uh, be happy with those who are she is happy with and and be wrathful to those that she is upset and um, angry with. Now when they did attack um, the house and this particular event occurred and uh, a shaheed Muhsin, he lost his life. That's why we call him shaheeds because of the attack. It was as a, a result of the attack that Sayyid Zahra had a miscarriage and uh, Al Muhsin uh, was killed. And of course, Imam Ali, السلام, the courageous person that he was, he resisted, of course. But then he said, 
لولا وصية رسول الله if it was not for the وصية of the Holy Prophet and that's why they use this these enemies of Islam these enemies of humanity they use this to their advantage and that's why they said in a proud way because they stepped back a bit then they said after he said Lola wasiyah to Rasulullah if it wasn't for what it is that the uh, Prophet had told me that I don't shed any blood then they said after stepping back they said ayyuhan nas innahu uh, ar, sorry ayyuhan nas ar-rajul musa that oh people he has a an order that he has to follow and that's when they comfortably grabbed him and dragged him to do bay'ah of course there are those who say he did do bay'ah there are those who say that he didn't do bay'ah that the the um the 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 swiping of the hand occurred but bay'ah in itself did not really uh happen now um who witnessed all of these things who witnessed that there was someone by the name of muhsin and asayda zahra was pregnant yes other than the holy prophet we have uh, imam ali we have uh, imam hassan we have imam hussein we have uh, asayda zainab we also have her maid fidda and we also have all of these uh, narrations that have been given by uh, al ma'sumin alayhim salam this is why it's so important to commemorate this particular uh, event. Let me read um, a piece of uh, poetry that has been uh, mentioned in uh, reference to Al Muhsin alayhi salam. Well, it starts off by Qala Salimun Qultu Ya Salman, Hal Dakhalu Walam Yakun Istidhanu Qal. Iwa Jabari, and then here, this is what I wanted to mention. Nadat, Yani Fatima, alayhi salam. Nadat, Ya Fudda, Esni Dini. O Fudda, help me, hold me. Fakad, wa Rabbi Askatu Janini, because by Lord they have made me uh, have a miscarriage. فَأَسْقَطَتْ بِنْتَ الْهُدَى And of course the daughter of uh, the Holy Prophet had uh, a miscarriage. Um, uh, جَنِينَهَا ذَلِكَ الْمُسَمَّى مُحْسِنًا That uh, unborn child that was called Muhsin. أَتُضْرَمُ النَّارُ بِبَابِ دَارِهَا وَآيَةُ النُّورِ عَلَى مَنَارِهَا etc etc this beautiful statement that speaks about you know that significance of the house but this very significant house is now being uh, attacked as i said in the beginning of my uh, talk we can tackle this from different angles from a theological side from a historical side from a fiqhi side um, from a qur'ani side from a riwa'i hadithi side but all in all, what we do know, what we can say is that the very commemorating of this particular event and mentioning the not only the attacking of Darul Zahra alayhi salam, not only attacking this Baytul Wahi and the that which led to the martyrdom of Sayyid Zahra, but what adds to uh, the calamity to the musibah is the loss of uh, this third son of Sayyidah al Zahra alayhi salam by the name of uh, Muhsin. So, when we put these things together and when we say that uh, we need that level of awareness on every level political, social, spiritual, moral, and everything else that is why we my brothers and sisters need to carry on with the legacy of mem me uh, remembering this i'd like to mention a uh, narration from uh, imam sadiq salam that speaks about the status of uh, a shaheed muhsin 
where on judgment day it says وَيَأْتِي مُحْسِنْ مُخَضَّبًا مَحْمُولًا تَحْمِلُهُ خَدِيجَةً بِنْتْ خُوَيْلِدْ وَفَاطِمَةً بِنْتْ أَسَدْ that Al-Muhsin will be uh, coming on judgment day and he will be held by his grandmother from uh, his uh, mother's side, Sayyidah Khadija alayhi salam, and his grandmother from his mother's side, mother's side, Fatima bint Asad alayhi salam. And of course, uh, the rest of the hadith that speaks about people being uh, grievous, people being sorrowful, people uh, of course uh, wanting to somehow, you know, demand that haqq that um, they were deprived of and uh, wanting to, of course, remember him and the legacy. Just imagine, my brothers and sisters, what we would have with, in addition to what we have with Al-Hasan alayhi salam and Al-Hussein al-Shaheed alayhi salam and then Al-Muhsin. Just imagine what we would have. And this is why it's a very, very sad event. The very fact that the, the only child of the Holy Prophet had to endure that suffering and leave this world and be killed at such a young age in the most evil of ways that itself really really uh, breaks our hearts so that's why we need to uh, continue on in remember remembering this and also inform our fellow uh, brothers and sisters around us about uh, all of this especially these points that we we mentioned that um, it's not just a matter of shi'i ulama shi'i historians mentioning the not only the very existence of Muhsin, but the significance of uh, Muhsin alayhi salam, but also Sunni ulama saying that yes, Fatima did have a son by the name of Muhsin, whether or not he was born, but he did leave this world at a very young age, or he um, was killed as, uh, uh, and, and she had a miscarriage, and that was because of Al Hujum al Dar, because the house of Fatima was attacked from different sides, and of course, that which led to her uh, miscarriage. So, the conclusion here is that when we look at all of these things, we are able to understand that, first of all, um, in addition to uh, Al Shaheed Muhsin alayhi salam, him being the last of the children of Amir al-Mu'mineen of Fatima al-Zahra, we also know that he was uh, killed because of the uh, uh, attack and of course um, that led to his martyrdom, which contributes and which uh, gives us more of an uh, incentive to want to um, commemorate Al-Ayyam Al-Muhsiniyya, whenever that may be, if anything that leads up to Al-Ayyam Al-Fatimiyya. Some of our ulama even say that, you know, this musibah itself is of the highest level of uh, masaib as well. And how much are we able to benefit and learn as well? Because that's going to strengthen our aqidah. The more we uh, connect ourselves with Rasulullah, the more our aqidah will uh, be firmer, the stronger it will get. And so if you do have that uh, in your heart, if you do make the claim that you want to show your allegiance and your loyalty to the Holy Prophet, you can't do it if you don't know how to. And how do we do it? by remembering his legacy, by remembering his offspring, by honoring his uh, progeny in the best way possible. Is love enough? The answer is no. We need to show it, we need to express it, we need to implement it, we need to make sure that our stance is clear. We can't be just sitting on uh, the bench, we need to make sure that this is our stance, that we are honoring the likes of 
Muhsin. We are commemorating his shahada. We are showing our form of objection against any oppression that befell upon Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad in any way possible, whatever level uh, that may be. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the tawfiq of being able to go to al Madina al munawwara And although we don't know exactly where a shaheed Muhsin has been buried, but there in al Madina al munawwara most certainly, and being able to do ziyara of a shaheed al Muhsin alayhi salam in this dunya, and for us to receive a shafa'ah of a shaheed Muhsin in al akhira wa akhiru da'wana, and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وآله الطاهرين